Sherm Atlanta warmly welcomes each of you to today's very special signature event luncheon. We're honored to have you here today as we embark on our journey toward building a better Atlanta. We're especially honored to have the following community leaders participating on our panel later on today. The Honorable Kasim Reed, who will be joining us in a, in a little bit. Sam Williams, President of the Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. Mike Cote, Chairman and CEO of SecureWorks. Ed Baker, Publisher of the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Ben Kaczynski, George S. Kraft, Professor of Business Administration with the Goizueta Business School. We also have a couple uh, special guests with us today that I'd like to call out. William Pate, who's the president with the Atlanta Convention and, and Visitors Bureau, as well as Sherry Thompson Dickerson, who's the commissioner the department, with the Department of HR at the City of Atlanta. So thank you all panelists and honored guests for being here today. I am Liz Weisong, and I am very proud to serve as this year's president of Sherm Atlanta, a vibrant organization made up of over 2,400 human resource-focused professionals, associates, and resource partners. Today's luncheon takes place during our 20th annual fall conference, our premier event of the year, but it's just one of, of over 100 different events that we offer uh, to our membership each year. This luncheon, like all our other events, would not be possible without the contributions of our volunteers and sponsors. Please join me in thanking Rachel Krause, EVP of Signature Events, Peter Rosen, chair of this event, their terrific team of volunteers, and the many resource partners who are serving as the table hosts throughout the room. I'd like to thank you all for putting together such a wonderful event. On your chair, you'll notice that there's an agenda, but let me just give you a quick overview of what, what to expect. We'll start with a few words from a friend and leader from our National SHRM organization. Then you will have some time to enjoy lunch with the folks at your table. Our SHRM Atlanta board chair, Nancy Vapraskis, will then kick off the program at around 12.15. The panel discussion will start shortly after. We will wrap up with highlights and next steps and conclude promptly at 1.30. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Janet Parker, who's the Chief Global Membership Officer for SHRM. Janet oversees all strategic outreach and liaison activities with SHRM's 20, 250,000 members in the, in the U.S. and over 140 countries. She's been a SHRM member for over 20 years, uh, served as a, the SHRM board chair from 2007 to 2008, was the chapter president of our neighbor, the Birmingham Society for Human Resource Management, state council director for Alabama, and the SHRM Foundation campaign chair. But just prior to joining SHRM full-time in July, Janet was executive vice president for HR at Regions Financial Corp. So she's got a great perspective of both sides of the world. Please joining, join me in welcoming our friend and former neighbor, Janet Parker. Okay, I have to look at my watch to make sure that it's still morning. So good morning, everyone. It's great seeing all of you here. I do, as I look around the room, I do have some wonderful friends here in Atlanta and fond memories of growing up uh, in Birmingham. It was always a real special treat uh, before getting ready to go back to school to come over here and do these shopping trips over here. I would save my money and then come over to Atlanta to do shopping. So it's always a treat to be back over here with so many of my good friends. Uh, and Liz, thank you for that invitation. And from SHRM, again, I want to uh, talk a little bit about SHRM, the largest association, HR association in the world. Uh, we are headquartered in Alexandria, Virginia, but we do have offices in Beijing and Mumbai. Uh, so really thriving there on the, on the global front. We have at SHRM 62 years of being the voice of the HR profession. It's hard to believe, 62 years. Um, we've seen a lot of changes, haven't we, in what's going on with our profession. We've been providing resources and training for HR leaders uh, with one of our ma major training events, as y'all, I hope many of you have been to, is our 
uh, national, our annual conference uh, in 2011. It's going to be in Las Vegas. And then in 2012, it is going to be right here in Atlanta. And I know we're all so excited about having the conference here, back here in Atlanta again. When we have these conferences, we bring HR leaders, thousands of them from all over the world. Uh, This past year, we had members from around 80 countries, and I'm looking at Dorothy, uh, around 80 countries represented at our conference in San Diego. So when we talk about this being a global event, it truly is. As we all know, in order to compete in the future, we've got to think globally. We've got to have the right talent, and we've also got to have the right strategy in place as we go forward. I mentioned a lot of the resources that SHRM provides, but one of its, one of its most treasured, I think, um, resources that we have, it's our chapters. Uh, that's an extension of SHRM into the local community. We have approximately 575 what we call affiliated chapters across the United States and also outside of the United States. But we're also very fortunate to have such a strong chapter presence here in Atlanta. Our Atlanta chapter here is certainly known for all of the impact that they have had over the past years in our community here. Um, Not only are they strengthening HR leadership, they're also strengthening business. Through the work with the mayor's program, the youth program, I had an opportunity to hear Mayor Franklin talk about this several years ago, and the time that so many of you in this room dedicated to that project. And then most recently, the telethon that you had with helping people who needed to to find jobs. As we think about our country and where we are right now, going out beyond our community, but as we think about our country, we've got to be in in repositioning, repositioning for growth. And as I look over this room and think about this event here, I think Atlanta is certainly doing that as you bring universities, business leaders, HR leaders together to look at how you can reposition Atlanta and continue the vibrancy that we've known for so many years here. So thank you for all that you're doing, and congratulations on your work here in Atlanta. And I want to extend a special thank you to Kimberly Douglas to invite me here today for this special event. I know this is the beginning of a wonderful relationship here in the Atlanta community, and Sherm is so excited to be here. But I also want to mention, before I sit down, there's one other person that I want to mention that's here today from Sherm, and that's Dorothy Knapp. Dorothy is one of our field services directors uh, who has also been a long-term friend. I had the opportunity to work with Dorothy for many years when I, too, was a volunteer leader. So, again, thank you for all that you're doing and best of luck to you as you reposition Atlanta for the future. Here we are in Atlanta in 2010 at the Cobb Galleria. And you know, I'd say we're a pleasant place and generally agreeable and perhaps not exempt from reproach. But what a grand word, magnificent, Magnificent. And I confess that's how I feel and how I hope you feel about the potential of this town that we like to call Atlanta. Hello, I'm Nancy Vapraskas, and I have the distinct honor of serving as your board chair for Sherman Atlanta over these last two years. I love this profession and the people in it. I love business, and I love this town. Great things happen here, and still we have the potential to do so much more. And so I'm particularly glad to welcome you here today and to thank you for attending our Sherman Atlanta Business Luncheon. We're very excited about this opportunity to host you, to break bread together, to tell you about our new plans and possibilities, our new Sherman Atlanta platform, a three-part Sherman Atlanta initiative, a BHAG, as fans of Jim Collins like to say, to provide an opportunity today to begin to talk about how we execute on our claim that Atlanta is a great city for business. 
Sherman Atlanta was founded in 1965 and today, as Liz said, enjoys a membership of over 2,400 members. Our members come from over 1,300 organizations, ranging from startups to the Fortune 500, from high tech to manufacturing, from first year graduates to senior executives, from those inside HR departments to those who serve as trusted resource partners. Collectively, we serve the human resources profession. Bruce Henderson, one of the founders of the Boston Consulting Group, is quoted as saying, maintaining a unique advantage and managing that differentiation is the essence of long-term business strategy. We think that statement is true for business, for associations such as ours, and for the Metro Atlanta community as a whole. And so we ask the question, what is a city's unique advantage? What creates greatness? Certainly it's not the color of the leaves or the height of the skyscraper. Isn't it the same advantage that a great company has? The people? Don't great cities have a certain vibe, almost an expectancy that they're better than the rest? And if that's true, if it is about the vibe, don't we want to intentionally set out to build a set of expectations? Don't we want to think about who we want to attract to our town and figure out how we go about attracting them? Don't we ask what businesses will best be served in our community and which companies will most enhance Atlanta? And then, as people come seeking opportunity in those businesses, students, workers, or leaders, don't we want to be intentional about figuring out how to engage them? How do we go about teaching what has long been called the Atlanta way? We don't just want people to live here. We want them to engage here, to every day have a sense of special civic pride and a connection to contributing to making this town better. And as businesses and individuals are recruited and engaged, don't we want to be actively building community infrastructure and enabling both continuing education and opportunity so that the very best and brightest at all workforce levels choose to stay here, investing in the community that they now call home? At our planning session earlier this year, we began to see that as the largest HR professional association in the metro area, we were perhaps uniquely qualified to bring people together for this dialogue. We understand the richness, the diversity, and the sense of community within the metro area. We know the culture of Cobb and of Decatur and all the communities in between, their uniqueness and our collective reliance. We understand the challenges of high unemployment and the uncertainty and fear that that brings. And at the same time, it's our job to focus on tomorrow's need for talent and to deal with the skill challenges of the next decade. We understand workforce planning, workforce analytics, and execution. And we're connectors. Frankly, we think we know people who know people who need to meet some people. Creating good business communities here in the metro area matters to us. It personally matters to us. And so we launched a three-part initiative under the banner of Building a Better Atlanta. The first building block is Building Better HR, creating educational opportunities, networking events, communities of practice, all designed to skill up HR people, HR departments, and the HR work that pl takes place here in Atlanta. Working with business leaders to set strong expectations and with educational institution to deliver on those needs. The second building block builds on making better emergent business leaders, ensuring that the next generation of leadership understands and is skilled to empower the workforce they inherit and the workforce they will be charged with developing to build leaders who get the development and execution of competitive people strategies and to understand that those plans don't just get built in the boardroom. They're lived out in our communities every day. 
to establish Metro business expectations of how we work and who we serve. The third building block is a natural extension of the work we do and is our ultimate goal, building a better Atlanta for business and for careers. As Sherman Atlanta began to look at the measure of a great city, we began to study the Forbes annual ranking of best cities for business and careers. Now, it's certainly not a perfect match. We have our own metrics and we need our own communication plan just like every company in this audience today does. We each establish our own unique talent acquisition plans, our own workforce engagement strategies, our own growth and retention goals. And we certainly need to do the same for Atlanta, not using somebody else's list, but creating our own list based on who we are and who we strive to be. But the Forbes article does give us a good place to start the primary score for this survey comes from statistics on education, housing, crime, culture and leisure, income, and employment. A large part of where you rank on the survey is dependent on growth, jobs today, and jobs planned for tomorrow. In 2008, we ranked number six in the nation. In 2009, we fell to number 24. And today, in 2010, we sit at number 27. The major reason for that drop is our high unemployment, our lack of industry diversity, and frankly, lackluster enthusiasm for near-term job growth here in the metro area. I have to tell you, when we saw that drop in rankings, the Sherman Atlanta Planning Group was not happy. And I'm confident that you aren't happy about it either. We Every one of us in this room know how good we can be, and we want to demonstrate the greatness of a very great city. Here at Sherman Atlanta, we know how to bring people together. We plan on bringing people together, and we're energized by the opportunity before us. And now, to broaden our perspective, we're all looking forward to hearing from our Atlanta mayor, the president of the Metro Chamber of Commerce, the publisher of the Atlanta Business Chronicle, and the president of SecureWorks. Now, as an HR executive, I have to say, that's a pretty nice display of talent, don't you think? In the trade, we call that right people, right job, right time. We look forward to hearing their perspective on our strengths and on the barriers we need to overcome to achieve our rightful place at the top of the best American cities in which to work, to learn, to play, to live. So we're here today ready to listen. We're here to engage. We're here to declare our civic pride. And then for all of us, it'll be about deciding. What do we do following this discussion? As I said, I know that here at Sherman Atlanta, we'll be connecting and collaborating with all of you, business, government, civic advocacy, education to define the issues, establish goals, and broaden the base of people who can contribute. We look forward to hearing what you have to say and what you want to do. With one goal in mind, building a better Atlanta for business and for careers. We're glad you're here. And so now let the conversation begin. Let me introduce Rachel Krause, our 2012 president-elect, for Sherman Atlanta, and Peter Rosen, chair of this event to make the panel introductions. Rachel is an attorney here in town with Lewis, Brisbo, Bisgard, and Smith, and Peter serves as president of HR Strategies and Solutions. So Rachel, Peter. Uh, I have the honor and the very easy job of introducing someone in the room who doesn't actually need an introduction, and that is our city's mayor, Kasim Reed. Uh, mayor Reed, as you all know, was inaugurated as the 59th mayor of the city of Atlanta on January the 4th, 2010. He has worked to improve public safety, to create new opportunities for the city's youth, um, and to re restore fiscal stability to the city and provide faster, more efficient customer service, service to residents. He is also here today in his unique uh, role and ability to uh, help us figure out what can be done and how we can help to make Atlanta a better city for business. 
Uh, prior to his election, uh, as many of you know, Mayor Reed was a partner with the law firm of Holland and Knight. He had also established a track record of leadership during 11 years as a member of the Georgia General Assembly. He was elected in 1998 as a state representative. He served two terms, and during that time, he, w he also served in the state senate, where he was vice chairman of the Senate Democratic Caucus. As an undergraduate member of Howard University's Board of Trustees, he created a fundraising program that contributed more than $10 million to the school's endowment, and he was also the youngest general trustee appointed to Howard University. He is, as the mayor of the city of Atlanta, he is also a member of the um, Conference of Mayors, and he is the chair of that conference's regional transit committee, and as we were discussing a moment ago, is pivotal in and involved in the budgeting process for the um, upcoming transportation bill for the federal government. So that will be very interesting. Um, his civic leadership, we are so ha proud to have him here as part of his civic leadership, is uh, well known. He has been, uh, it's been recognized by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, the Washington Post, and too many other um, publications to name right now. Um, but what's nice to know is that he is a good old Atlanta boy. He went to, he's from the neighborhood of Cascade. He went to what is now known as Westlake High School, was then known as Westwood High School, and he graduated from Howard University. So it's nice to know that we have someone who we know cares about and knows about Atlanta who wants to make Atlanta better. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. And uh, to, um, I'd be lying to tell everybody that I didn't stress a lot this weekend in trying to put together words for our, our, the panelists that I'm introducing, Sam Williams, Mike Cody, and Ben Kaczynski. First of all, most of you know a lot about them. And secondly, if I were to talk about them, I could go on forever. And what they've given to the city, to uh, beyond their accomplishments. So what I'm do gonna do is just introduce them one at a time. And I'm gonna start with Sam Williams president of the uh, Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Sam was named the president in 1997. He leads an organization of 4,000 companies which employ more than 700,000 employees. Sam has worked to make Metro Atlanta a model of successful public-private <coughs> partnerships. Prior to joining the chamber, Sam was the president of Central Atlanta Progress, where he organized Metro Atlanta leaders, again, using the leadership within the, uh, the city, to um, basically get our city ready for the Olympic Games. Sam joined CAP after 21 years as a partner on, at John Portman's architect development firm. Earlier in his career, Sam served on the staff of Mayor Ivan Allen, and he has also been recognized by Georgia Trend in its list of Georgia's most influential leaders consistently for more than 20 years and was inducted into the Georgia State University Business Hall of Fame. Sam is a Tennessee native and a graduate of Georgia Tech and Harvard Business School. Sam, welcome. Next is our moderator, Ben Kaczynski. We are very, very fortunate to have Ben as a moderator. Uh, he's experienced, he's funny, he's witty, and he makes life easy for the panelists. I was on a panel with him, and I can tell you, he, he, he helps everybody look good. So, uh, Ben uh, arrived at the Gosweta Business School following six years on the faculty at Harvard Business School. Prior to arriving at Harvard, he was a professor at the University of Arizona, where he was co-founder of the university's multi-million dollar group decision support laboratory. Ben holds a PhD in computer science from Purdue University. He is published in such diverse journals as Communications of the ACM, Harvard Business Review, which I think you all have a copy on your, on your seats, the MIS Quarterly, Journal of MIS, and as you could see, I could go on forever. There are just too many to, uh, to mention. And I know all of us read those journals religiously. <laughs> now, are there any um, SOBs in the room? For those of you who think I'm um, losing it here a little bit, you may be right, but 
SOBs are students of Ben, and those, whether from Harvard Business School or, or Gosweta or wherever, there are SOBs all over the um, country and probably the world. Ben, thanks. Okay, the last person I'm going to introduce is Mike Cody. Mike is the um, chairman and CEO of SecureWorks, and um, he joined them in February of 2002. Come on up. So under his leadership, the firm has grown to become one of the leading information security services firms protecting over 2,900 clients worldwide. Prior to joining SecureWorks, Mike held executive positions with Talus Solutions, a pricing and revenue management software firm acquired by Manugistics in 2000. Mike joined Talus from MSI Solutions, where he was chief operating officer. In, ad in addition to those technology executive roles, Mike's early career included international assignments with KPMG. Mike's leadership style is punctuated by open communications, high integrity, and client-centric philosophy. Mike is a certified public accountant and a member of Business Executives for National Security. He is a graduate of Boston College with a double major in computer science and accounting. And at the very least, thank you for uh, allowing Matt Ryan to be part of our, uh, our city also. And Mike is not new to this subject. Mike actually serves on a committee at the Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce, which focuses in on bringing technology companies into town as well as uh, enabling current uh, companies to grow. Thank you very much. And Rachel, it's back to you. And last but certainly not least is Ed Baker, uh, the publisher of the Atlanta Business Chronicle. And the reason he is certainly not least is if his paper didn't write about it, how would we know it had happened? <laughs> so. Um, just a brief uh, background of Mr. Baker. As you all know, he is the publisher of the Atlanta Business, Chron Business Chronicle and has been for about 24 years. Um, it is one of the lo country's largest business journals with over 200,000 readers each week. In addition to his local responsibilities, he is also the chief strategic officer for the American City Business Journals, which is the parent corporation for the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Uh, he grew up in Atlanta, another good old Atlanta boy, grew up in Atlanta, and uh, is still very active in his community. He serves on several boards, including the Metro Atlanta Chamber, uh, the Atlanta Convention, of Visitor Convention and Visitors Bureau, and also the public broadcasting for Atlanta and Georgia State University's Robinson College of Business. Uh, he's a graduate of Georgia State University, and he is proud that he has been happily married to his high school sweetheart for 35 years. Thank you very much.